Hello and welcome to 90 East. This is the second distance time graph video and so if you haven't already, we suggest that you take a couple of minutes to watch the introductory video and then join us again. The main take home message from our last video was that the slope of a distance time graph is the same as the average speed and the steeper the slope, the faster the average speed. So this means that from a glance we can tell immediately that the average speed of the journey represented by the purple line is faster than any of the other journeys represented here. One of the other benefits of a distance time graph is that we can represent an entire journey, which would look something like this. There are three portions or three stages to this journey, and they're represented by the blue line, the red line, and the purple line. This graph tells us that something or someone has traveled 10 kilometers, they've stayed somewhere, and then they've returned back home or back to their original spot. We can also tell from this graph immediately that their initial traveling was a lot slower than the return journey. So for instance, maybe they've run somewhere, they've stayed to visit a friend, and then they've traveled back by catching a lift in a car. To consolidate our understanding, let's just do a couple of calculations to work out what speed they traveled to their friend's house and what speed they returned back. So to calculate the speed for the first journey, we need to look at the distance that was traveled. So the change in the y-axis, which is 10 kilometers and the change in time, which is one hour. So 10 kilometers divided by an hour is 10 kilometers an hour. Next, we know that they stayed at their friend's house because the line is horizontal. Let's now calculate the return journey home. So we need to know the distance that was traveled once more, which is 10 kilometers. And we need to know the time that it took to travel those 10 kilometers. And this is slightly different to all the other calculations we've done so far. We need to draw two lines from the beginning of the journey to the end of the journey to check where they meet the x-axis. This allows us to look at what the difference or change in time has been. So we can see here that they returned home at 2.2 hours and then they left their original journey at 2 hours. To calculate the change in time we need to do a simple subtraction of 2.2 minus 2. So in our equation we can say 10 kilometers divided by 2.2 minus 2 and we always put those into brackets because that's what we want to calculate first before we do the division. So we can say that that would be 10 kilometers divided by 0 0.2 of an hour because 2.2 minus 2 is 0.2 and that division leaves us with the average speed of 50 kilometers per hour. Now it's always useful when doing any calculation to look at the numbers just to make sure they make sense. So here we've calculated that the average speed of the return journey is a lot faster than the speed of the original journey and looking at the gradients, we can confirm that that was definitely the case. So just to review, distance time graphs can be really useful because they can illustrate an entire journey rather than just one portion or one phase of a journey. As always, there's a worksheet linked in the description box below with a couple of exercises that you can work through in your own time, just to make sure that you understood how to calculate a return journey. We hope that you found this video useful. If you have any questions, please directly just message us through YouTube or send an email to 90easttv at gmail.com. Thanks, everyone.